Yo, what is going on fam? Keezy here from Black Market and in today's video we're going to be talking about this rhizograph effect. This is sort of that rhizograph style that people like. It's got the bright pinks, bright cyans, bright orange and greens, just really bright, cool looking um, artistic print. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop and I've got some artwork open. This is an illustration that was created by one of our in-house designers, Julie, and we just need to make a couple of tweaks to it to get it ready for this effect. So one thing I notice immediately about this particular illustration is that there is a lot of shading and lighting effects. So you can see here if we zoom in, there's sort of this background gradient and there are some glows and some motion blurs. And just in general, some of these elements won't reproduce quite right with the risograph style. So we're gonna simplify it a bit. So first thing, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make this background gradient uh, just a solid magenta. And I'm gonna also try my best to use colors that are here in our channels so that Ink Lab selects them appropriately without me having to go in and make any manual selections. Next, I'm gonna come down in into my Space Elements folder and uh, just disable some of these elements, particularly some of these glows and things that might throw off our effect a bit. Some outlines might not be needed in there. So we're getting to a point now where it's looking uh, more solid. So I'm just replacing anything that's a gradient with a solid color and making some of these colors stand out more, you know, with what I would expect the risograph style to be. This paint bucket here, I think we could actually have some color there in the paint bucket. So I'm gonna turn off the shadow in the handle there and then come up here and using the paint bucket tool with, with uh, keyboard shortcut G and then holding Alt to sample a color. I'm just gonna fill in the paint bucket with blue and now we've got this nice blue paint bucket there. And I think we're ready to go. I might change the color of the handle on the bucket there also to blue. Mm, I don't know, maybe even yellow on, on this because I think I might have the blacks in this image be blue. So it would probably be better. Even orange is kind of nice, but then there's not enough contrast. That looks good. So I'll rock with that. And we're gonna change this color here also to yellow. So now we've got yellow and blue and magenta, three really strong, bright colors, no gradation. So we know everything is gonna be really solid. And um, this is something that we could actually print so we're on the right track. I just see a couple more little pieces in here that I wanna hide. Okay, so we're looking good now. I'm also gonna press C on the keyboard and then expand this image out a little bit to give this some padding. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom and uh, increase the size of our background by pressing X to flip my four and background color and then control backspace to fill with background color. And I'm pretty much ready to rock Ink Lab now. So we're we'll go 150 DPI is fine. And then texture on low is good. Everything looks good except for, since we're doing this risograph style, I'm actually gonna change the angles on some of these colors to 45. Yellow also at 45. And the orange can stay, or the magenta can stay at 75. And then we will click play. Okay, so we've went ahead and ran that and the result actually looks pretty good, but there is some bleeding of colors here in the clouds that I don't really want. And uh, we need to get rid of this black as well because with these risograph prints, you typically do not see any black ink. And I don't know if that's a rule or just a preference, but we're gonna get rid of it. So the way I'm gonna do that is by going into my Ink Lab group here and then holding control and clicking the thumbnail of the K channel to select the K channel. And then I'm going to group M and 
Y, and then with my selection made, click the mask icon to generate a mask around those two that prevents either of them from showing up in that outline, which allows blue to essentially take over as our outline color. We're also going to change the blend mode of all of these inks from multiply to normal, and that's gonna help them be a lot brighter, as you can see. And then one other thing that we're gonna do is select the blues here. In fact, we're gonna go and select the blues from here this way. And then we're going to use those or we're gonna use that selection, I should say, to limit the area of effect of blue. So we're gonna group the magenta and then turn that blue mask on magenta so that now we don't have any of that magenta ink bleeding into our blue cloud there, which looks pretty nice. We can also, if we wanted to add sort of like a offset effect, we could just move down or over our magenta a little bit and tweak it like so to make it look like the ink's kind of coming out of the frame like that. I mean, that's, that's, the effect is really pretty much there. I think I might also limit the magenta from showing up in our handle there just by going select color range, grabbing yellow, and then adding that to our selection here. So just pressing backspace with uh, black selected to stop magenta from having any place in the yellow where I don't want it. So now we have that bright solid yellow there, which looks really good, but we're losing a little bit of texture now. So what I need to do is duplicate this background texture, move it up, and then I'm gonna clip it to my separations group on multiply to give this image some more texture. However, now we get sort of a dirty, muddy look in the background. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go underlying layer white and just hide everything that's not exactly the image just by dragging this. And then when we do get to the image, I'm gonna alt click and smooth these handles out a little bit. And now we've got the texture in there and we can go back to our pink here and I'm gonna choose a different color for it. This is pretty close, but I think it's usually a little bit brighter. A little bit lighter. And the yellow. Maybe the same thing. Make it sort of a really, really bright color. And then we can do this blend if trick here as well to add some texture to the yellow. So to do this, I'm just double clicking on the right hand side of the layer and then dragging this slider and then alt clicking the handle to smooth the slider out a bit. And I think that looks good. So that might honestly be it for the Resograph print tutorial. I mean, we could come in here and tweak some of these colors a bit more and do whatever we want, but I think you get the idea. So here is our result. We could actually come back in here and if the background color is a little bit too um, dark for our taste, we could change the background color layer here from multiply to normal and then adjust the opacity just a little bit. And this will kind of blend the background a bit, but I'm happy with how it is. So I'm gonna undo that. Also, we could run this at a different resolution, something like 300. We actually ran this here at 150. And so that's why it looks a little bit pixelated on the zoom. This is 200% zoom. But if we were to run this on 300 DPI, it would be nice and sharp and we wouldn't have any of those issues. So I hope this video was helpful. Rezograph print tutorial using InkLab and Photoshop. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us. Please leave a comment telling us what other kinds of videos you would like to see. All that good stuff. I'm out.